Hello everybody, thank you for watching Light Technology. Today I'll be showing you how to build your very own high voltage generator. Let me start off by saying this is a very dangerous project. In fact, one small slip up can easily cost your life. Therefore, I highly suggest you only attempt this project if you have a well-based understanding of high voltages. With that being said, let me get right on into it. For our circuit, we will be using a ZVS driver, which stands for Zero Voltage Switching. I will not be going in depth on how this circuit functions in this video, however, I will give you a brief explanation on what's going on. So basically, what happens is electricity oscillates between these two MOSFETs. So when one MOSFET is on, the other is off. So then, basically what happens is, at one moment, you'll have electricity flowing in this direction, and then that MOSFET will turn off and this one will turn on, and then you will have electri electricity flowing in this direction. That oscillation will create somewhat of a sine wave, since it's fluctuating, fluctuating from positive to negative. That then induces a magnetic field in our secondary coil. And since our, our turns are a 1 to 10 ratio, or depending on the transformer, usually our flyback transformers are somewhere in the thousands. And since we only are wrapping 10 turns around our primary, It'll be, our voltages will be stepped up quite a bit. These are all the components re required to construct our circuit. We will need a flyback transformer, which are commonly used in CRT TVs. We'll need two heat sinks like this for our MOSFETs. I only have one at the moment, I'll find one later. Uh, but we'll need two 470 ohm 2 watt resistors, two 12 volt Zener diodes, two 400 volt fast diodes. I use the 4007 diode, which works great. Uh, we will need a PCB board to mount everything, two IRFP260N MOSFETs, you could use a 250 version and it will work just as fine. We'll need two 10K ohm resistors, they could be any wattage. We'll need a 0.68 ultra farad 250 volt or above MKP capacitor. This has to be very high quality since uh, bad quality ones won't give you as good of an arc. Uh, but for our inductor, what I did, you can buy them, otherwise if you can't find one, you can build one out of a ferrite toroid and wrap uh, 26 windings of copper wire around it, which is what I did here. And it will give you a value somewhere in between there, which is the desired value of 47 to 200 old microhenries and around 10 amps. Yeah. Um, what am I forgetting? Oh yeah, and we will need pretty decent amount of copper wire so we can wrap 10 windings around this ferrite core. Doesn't matter, it shouldn't matter if you use rubber coated wire or enameled. I, I use enameled since I can put a heat sink on it to help dissipate some of the heat that's produced. But it, it, it shouldn't really matter what you choose. So just as long as you have uh, enough for 10 windings. I've left a link in the description for where you can buy all these components, however if you do not feel like building your own, you can go the easy way and just buy your own. This product here came with its own flyback transformer, and it produces fantastic arcs. Um, yeah, but it's very compact and efficient. I like it, and yeah, if you want to go the easy way, go ahead and just buy one of these. It's definitely worth the money. It comes with its own flyback transformer, uh, directions, uh, however it does not come with a power supply. Um, but you can just buy your own or make your own. Um, yeah, so I've left a link in the description where you can buy one of these if you want to go the easy way. Before we construct our circuit, there are a couple key things we must not forget. For example, on a MOSFET, the first pin is always a gate 
Our second pin is always a drain and our third pin is always a source. So on our circuit diagram, our first pin will be connected to our gate, our second pin will be connected to the drain, and our third pin will be connected to our source. Down here, our first pin will be connected to the gate, our second pin will be connected to the drain, and our third pin will be connected to our source. The second key thing I'd like to remind you guys is that on a Zener diode and a fast diode, there's a black ring and a silver ring on one of the ends of the diodes. Those rings must always be facing in the direction of the arrow. Once you've gathered all your components, we can now start mounting them all to our perf board here, following this circuit diagram. This is how my ZVS circuit ended up looking. Yours does not have to look exactly like this, however it should look somewhat similar. All the components should be there. Um, I decided to add some connectors just to make things easier for connecting up to my flyback transformer, however you do not have to do that. Um, but yeah, let's get right into, once you've built this circuit, we can now wire our flyback transformer. To wire the transformer, make sure you start from the opposite side of this red wire, and then work your way from the top of the ferrite core, around five turns, and then snip it on the bottom so that you have a little bit of wire just like this then after you've done that repeat the process and make an identical one start from the top of this core and work your way around until you've reached another five turns and then snip it right here once you've done that you should end up having something that looks like this with the bottom co coil starting from the top ending at the bottom the second coil starting from the top, ending at the bottom. And so then after that, what we will end up doing is combining these two center wires to form the middle tap. Just like this. On our circuit, this wire will be connected to here, this wire will be connected to here, and this wire will be connected to here. It doesn't matter the orientation as long as this wire is in the middle. So it could be like that or it could be like this. With this there, this there, this there. It doesn't matter. Either way, as long as the middle wire is connected to this middle wire on the diagram, it'll work. If you're using NML wire, be sure you scrape off the tips of the wire so you can get a better connection. Like. As you can see here, I scraped off the tip and it changes to a copper colored wire. Once you've done that, go ahead and plug your transformer right into your circuit. And after you've done that, we will now be ready to test and see if we get any plasma. The power supply I'm using for the, our circuit is a 19 volt, 4.7 amp HP laptop power supply. I salvaged this from an old PC, um, but it works great. It gives me great arcs. Uh, if you don't have anything like this laying around, then you could use anything from the range of 12 volts to 32 volts, I believe. And that'd basically be maxing out our circuit at 32 volts. Uh, but if you're using high voltage, then make sure your ampage is also pretty high. So you can get a balance between there. Um, but yeah, if you can't find any of these, I've left a link in the description where you can buy one. Otherwise, you could make one. There's plenty of tutorials that show you how to make one. I won't get into that now, so I'm just going to use this. So I plugged everything in. Uh, it works. However, I accidentally dropped this flyback transformer down the stairs. So that core moves up and down a bit, which is... Not good, that means something's broken inside, but it's, it still works, it's just not very good at all. It's not what we want, let me show you. That's all I'm getting. Very small. We want way more than that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to rewire transformer and then I'll show you what I get after that. Okay, I got my transformer wired up again. Uh, the only thing I did not show you guys is that 
um, when you get your circuit running, get the high voltage wire from the top of the flyback and run it around here and turn it on. And then whichever wire it arcs to most, go ahead and solder a ground wire onto that. And then be sure to insulate it so it doesn't arc to any other pins as well. Um, then once you do that, you are set and we can now see what type of arcs we are getting. If your circuit's working efficiently enough, you should be getting arcs somewhere between this size. At least on 19 volts you should. So yeah, it's 19 volts isn't the max it can do, but you still get pretty good arcs, as you can see. You can still mount some pretty thick copper wire too. If you hold it for long enough, as you can see here. It also changes to some pretty cool colors. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it gets pretty hot, so don't touch it for a while. If you want to, you can put all of the components inside one small little portable project box. And what I did is I added a little controller that controls voltage and ampage. Um, so let me show you what happens. Okay, so I have to set the amps. And just like that, nice little portable high voltage generator. Now that we've built our high voltage generator, let's start getting to the fun stuff. You can see how the fire reacts to the plasma. It's pretty cool. Oh crap. Okay. Uh, do not try this at home. Ever. If you notice, the electrons blow the fire, which is pretty cool. If I pull away, fire will increase. Just bring it near. Here's a list of projects you can make using a high voltage generator.
If you'd like to see a tutorial for how to make any of those projects, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up. And subscribe if you'd like to see more awesome science videos just like this one. And that right there concludes the end of this video. Thanks for watching.